I thought I'd talk about my gravity fed drip irrigation system that I put together. Starting off with the where the water's coming from, obviously, uh, got a rain uh, collector here. So, got two water butts sitting behind my shed. Put this extension pipe in just so I could hide the water butts out of sight, out of mind. Um, they're both about 210 litre barrels, I believe. So, it gives me about 400 litres of water, which is a decent reserve if you're just using it for watering the plants. I've got them hitched together so that they both fill up at the same time and uh, you can see I've got standard hose pipe coming off it which then goes to an inline tap so I can control the flow and at the end of the line I have a standard uh, hose connector so it just gives me a bit of versatility generally I'm just using it to fill buckets and, uh, and watering cans and also to fill up my my main header tank for the drip irrigation system so the flow rate here it's it's decent but it's not good enough to run the drip, drip irrigation it's not high enough up to, to create enough pressure um, especially when the water starts running a bit lower but instead I have this tank which is a hundred liter old chutney barrel I believe I bought off eBay for about 10 pounds and having it at this height is perfect it it's about a meter, 1.2 meters maybe, and at that height it does a perfect job of creating enough pressure that the drip irrigation works perfectly. I have about 30 chili plants that I've got in front of you here, and each of them have a, have a dripper, and as I'll show you in a little while, each of them work perfectly fine. So the system, standard drip irrigation, it's a 13 mil pipe as the main line, the big pipe there and then using the small 4 mil uh, flexible hose to actually do the drippers. So that's the 4 mil hose and I've just cut off a small piece there. That's the main line, the 13 mil pipe. It's a bit more rigid than the hose but doesn't need to be flexible as you'll see in a little while. So I've just cut off a small piece just to show you how it all fits together. It's pretty straightforward. The flexible hose, what I would suggest when you are working with this stuff, get some hot water nearby, so it just makes it a bit more flexible when you're putting in the fittings. See how the two, well, two of the fittings that are available for it, one of them is a dripper, the one on the left, and then the one on the right, that's what you use to pierce the main line. So the dripper, it's basically got a little ball inside it that um, controls the flow rate. That one there does four liters per hour but I prefer these ones here. These are flexible, uh, adjustable, sorry, and it, you can adjust the flow rate right down to minuscule amounts or have it flowing freely if you want. So I, I prefer those, especially when the plants have different needs throughout the season. So here you can see how much easier that was. Well, if, you, if you've ever tried this without making it uh, heated up like this, you'll know what I'm talking about. It will hurt. It when you're doing 30 of them you end up with really sore fingers see so how I'm just piercing the main line pipe you can see it makes a small hole and I'm basically warming up the other end so I can actually put the dripper on it so it's warmed up enough now so I could use that dripper but like I say I prefer these flexible drippers here They're these adjustable ones so stick that on there, slides in nice and easy. Once a, once the pipe does cool down, it creates a nice solid hold. So now you've got your, your drip line. You're going to go and stick that inside the hole you've just created. And then it's got a bit of a thread on it, so you can twist it on, and it screws in nice and tight and creates a good seal. That's pretty much that for, for sticking in the dripper line. So obviously you also need to put fittings on to the main line depending on how you've set it up. Um, again, use the hot water, make sure that you're making it a bit more flexible so it makes it easier to work with. You can see there's a T-junction, so if you're going to put that inside your system, you need a T-junction, that's it, just slot it in there, creates a nice seal. Heat up the other end, make sure that at the end of your line you have a plug, so that's what this is here, it just plugs it up, so make sure that the water is not just flowing out the other end and not it coming out the little drippers. So that's a nice little section that I've created there, but yeah, it's just an example. And you can see that's exactly how I've set this up. Um, 29, 30 of these 
all on this one system running off that barrel that's lifted about a meter 1.2 meters above the ground level there's a t-junction there how i've connected it all up you can see there's a main line running along the wall and then off the main line there are four sections of the main line coming off t-junctions and on those ones that come off from the t-junction i have the drippers all plugged in so it's about six or seven drippers on each of the main lines you can see them in there there's the, the plug at the end as well and all of those all nicely fitted and yeah there's my little greenhouse unfortunately not enough space for all my plants but it's a good way to see uh, which ones do better and I'm pretty sure the ones in the greenhouse will do better far more controlled and far more heat so this here is my timer I'm just gonna disconnect it whoops need to switch off the tap but just gonna disconnect it for the moment just so I can show the drippers in action but I think it's I think it's not essential that you use a timer but it definitely makes life easy you can leave your plants for a, a couple of weeks and not worry about them because they're gonna be on the timer and they're gonna get watered so you can go away on holiday and not worry about them or not get a neighbor to come over and water them for you so yeah I've just connected them directly to each other I'm gonna switch on the tap you'll hear a bit of hissing from some of the drippers just as the air goes out the system and then the drippers start actually happens all quite quickly it fills up with water and there you go it starts dripping it really is as simple as that it's not a difficult thing to do it doesn't cost a lot of money but once you've got it set up it's so convenient you can use it year after year these these things are quite uh, robust so once i've finished up this year i just have to pack it all away and ready for next year so like i said with the adjustable drippers it makes life a lot easier you can see i have some bigger pots and some smaller pots and obviously they have different water needs so the adjustable drippers allow you to adjust for that and also later on in the season when the plants get bigger they're going to need some more water so you can just open up the flow so there that's all the drippers working not a problem um, more than enough pressure to do this that hundred liter barrel I, I use water probably 10 minutes for every 72 hours and that doesn't doesn't use more than about 15 liters I believe so here's just an example to showing the adjustable flow rate just to adjust it up a bit more because it, it was only letting out little drips so yeah that's a bit better so you can see it's quite adjustable and pretty easy to do really once you've got it set up it's it's all good so I ran it there for a little while and need to top it up so just give that a top up I find I'm only having to top it up every four or five weeks um, it's not really an issue one thing you do need to watch out for is debris especially if you're using rainwater collected off the roof so I've got these inline filters here you can see the rubbish gets collected in there any leaves or debris so make sure that it doesn't block up the drippers so you just empty that out every month or so uh, depending on how much debris you're going to get just just check it out but it's quick and easy you can see that and yeah let's connect this all back together again you can see the the timer itself actually has uh, a filter within it um, the timer is pretty straightforward it uses batteries so no mains needed um, it, ha it has inside it a small ball valve that turns open and lets the water flow through pretty straightforward um, a lot of different settings you can use how long you want it to water for uh, the frequency uh, how often um, yeah it's it's about 10 or 12 pound I believe this is the Kingfisher model yeah make sure that you you've got it in the right direction so the tap going in on the right and then where it goes out to the actual drippers to the left but it's got an arrow to show you that and that's it stick the system back on and it's all ready to go so living in the UK we have a relatively short summer and chili plants need to get a head start for that so I start them off um, around about February or March you know, under lights and I use a very similar system for for keeping them watered just using this bucket here which I've attached a tap to using the same timer that I'm using outside um, I have all the plants under lights like you see there those are T5 
I hope this was useful to someone out there. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching.